So we need to talk about Thea. First and foremost, you should probably go into the trial mode and try her out yourself. Figure out if you like her play style. Watch this video and make your own decision as well in case you miss some things that I pick up or maybe I miss some things that you pick up. And if I'm gonna tell you to go try her out in the trial mode and make your own decisions, I also want you to know that it might be set up in a way that makes Thea feel incredibly powerful. So a lot of the enemies here are going to have Hydro Aura on them because they're gonna be Hydro Slime. And this matters a lot because these slimes are going to regenerate their Hydro Aura. These slimes will also also affect other enemies in this trial mode, but we will talk about that in a second. When I entered this for the first time, the first thing I noticed is that they actually have Bennett in the trial mode. And this is pretty surprising because trial mode usually consists of like Barbara, Lisa, Amber, Noel, some of the free characters. This one, they gave you a, like a free decked out Noblesse Oblige, Pavonius Sword, a little bit of a buffer here with Bennett to buff up the damage. It's gonna give you Pyro Resonance inside of here. It's also gonna give you, well, Bennett. So you're gonna feel incredibly powerful. You're like, oh, let's see what Dea does. You just run in here and start smacking things. It's fun to feel powerful, but as you can see, the hilly trails here are also getting added Hydra Element from the slimes, which is why I wanted to point it out. The slimes are gonna wet everything around <laughs> themselves too. So you have free Hydro application in here to make your Dea feel as strong as humanly possible. Bennett buff and an enemy who's debuffing themselves technically and debuffing the rest of the enemies as well. So let's talk about this indomitable flame arranging flame here. Now this is gonna apply just one single solitary unit of pyro application on cast and on proc. And it's got a two and a half second cooldown on being able to activate, which is a pretty big deal. And in a lot of traditional like reversed melt teams that you're gonna wanna use day and you're really gonna want to do that. She doesn't apply it fast enough. So let's put her feel down and we'll show you with Kaya's skill elemental burst combo, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get Kaya to melt and then you're going to get Dea to melt for the remaining duration of the elemental skill. So we'll pop her field here, boom, bop. And now you can see that Dea actually is melting, not Kaya. We'll drop it one more time for you so you can see it here. Maybe we'll play it back slowly. So you can see we had a little bit of ore left, but afterwards Cryo's going to take over and you'll never get Pyro Aura on the enemy. Now, the other thing I want to talk about here is all of the durations on her elemental skill, her elemental burst, the cooldowns on them, and how it makes it very apparent that her animation time alone is massive, which is a pretty big deal. So let's break this down. Molten Inferno has a 12 second field duration, 20 second cooldown. Her elemental burst has a four second duration on it as well. And when you use the elemental burst, it's going to pick up your field and pause it for the duration of your elemental burst. So this 12 second field duration, there's no way to extend it without a constellation. Constellation two will extend it by six seconds. We don't have that in training mode here, but her animation time is so long, you can actually get the field to last the full 20 second cooldown. Now, why is that a bad thing? Well, let me show you first and then we'll tell you afterwards. So what you need to do here to showcase this, you just drop the field and this is gonna start the cooldown counting down in the background there. You also have the ability to move it one time with her elemental skill follow-up, Ranging Flame. So check this out. We're gonna use our elemental skill. We're gonna get the field to last, quote unquote. It's gonna pause for the full 20 seconds, even though we should only be pausing it for four from our elemental burst, should be 12 plus four, 16. We actually get 12 plus four, plus four seconds of animation. So we'll drop the field here. We have Ranging Flame available. We'll use our elemental burst. She'll pick it up. There's an animation there. This lasts exactly four seconds, no matter how many times or incorrect inputs you get. So I'll drop it back down and then we can move it one more time and the field will last the rest of the duration until the elemental skill is ready to come off cooldown. Why is that a bad thing? Well, it seems really cool on surface and I was like kind of flabbergasted as how this was happening. There's no way for animations alone take four full seconds, which is what's going on. If you're using all of her skills, moving all of the fields, using her kit to its fullest potential, out of those 20 seconds, four of them are you literally doing nothing, which means out of 60 seconds, if you have a 60 second encounter, 12 of those seconds are just animations for day of playing. And in my opinion, that's pretty bad. That's really bad. That is 20% of the battle. You're doing nothing. 20% is just you playing out the animation for that. 
plan out the animation to move it. It's pretty awful. Now, if you're not a min-maxer, are you going to care that much? Probably not, but it is something you should be aware about because that means that Dea is going to be using up 20% of your time just on animation. So if you're in the spiral abyss, every 60 seconds, 12 of those seconds is gonna be Dea just doing animation. So if you need to beat a boss in 60 seconds, 12 of them are dead seconds because you're not doing anything there. If you need to beat a boss in two minutes, 24 of those seconds in that two minutes is just Dea doing animations, which is pretty bad. I'm not a fan of that. I like Claymore characters. I'll probably end up starting a Claymore account or something just so I can try to get Dea and use her there. It's very wild to me that she is that slow. Now, the other thing about Dea is her elemental burst. It's very tricky to know what's going on if you're especially new to Genshin inside of here. It looks like you're melting everything, vaporizing everything with Dea in here. The normal internal cooldown is not very good with lane on bite because you want to have a shorter internal cooldown to actually activate elemental reactions because she hits so many times. Well, look at how many times we vaporize here. You will see that not every punch can vaporize. In fact, it's like every third, third punch will vaporize these enemies. And it looks really cool, especially if you pop all of your stuff. I got Barbara going, I got this going. I'm rocking and rolling, man. I see melt, vaporize, melt, vaporize. It looks like she's doing a ton of damage. Let's drop this down again, punch this bad boy, spawn the enemies in. And you can see that once again, she is just not able to be the benefiter of a lot of the reactions. Also, I do believe uh, an interactable bug here where if you elemental burst with Dea and choose to jump, it just take, it takes it away, which is pretty awful. I don't like that either. And it's not like, oh, you need to be able to do that because if you don't do that, there's no way to cancel her burst. Just. Just swap a character. Just swap characters. It's not that bad. There's, you should not be able to cancel her burst while jumping. You might say, that's not a big deal. The jump thing, I just won't hit the space bar. What do you do when you need to break out of freeze? You spam the space bar. So when you're elemental burst and you get frozen, you're like, oh, let me get out of here so I can do damage. You're gonna jump out of your own elemental burst. I don't understand these little nuances like this that are getting by the development team, right? The last one that I saw was like, I'll hide them with his elemental burst. The elemental burst, you had zero mirrors. It would generate three mirrors, which would give you the dendro infusion, but there was like a little bit of a delay. You'd get, you'd use your elemental burst, you'd come out of your elemental burst, and you'd be able to get a couple attack strings off before the dendro infusion would even apply, which made him a little bit more, I don't know, clunky to play, which is what I kind of feel like Dea is here. A little a little too clunky to play for like not a lot of benefit. It's not like, oh, if you make all these super clunky things about Deus Kit work, you're rewarded with the best character in Genshin Impact. No, it's like if you do all these really clunky things with Deus Kit, you're rewarded with like a semi-decent character at the end of the day, which is, I don't think I've ever actually dogged on a character like this or pointed out how many flaws, we'll put it that way, a character has. And Deus got a lot of them. She's got a lot of flaws, not saying she's useless, Actually, one of her coolest teams is probably gonna be a burning team, which is gonna help her extend the pyro aura that she applies with her own elemental skill. It's gonna extend that pyro aura so you can reverse melt more. That's a way to fix that. There are ways to fix things in this kit, at least some of them, but I can't really get beyond the four second downtime of just animation or the ability, I should say inability of her to benefit. If you wanna make her your super main, a hyper carry character, the inability for her to benefit from some of the best supports her element usually interacts with. So she's in this very weird state. And this second constellation just utterly confuses me, utterly confuses me because it has the ability to increase the fiery sanctum field duration by six seconds, which is cool. But as we've already showcased, you can kind of just by hitting buttons and using her kit normally, you don't have to do anything special and the field duration is going to be fine. It's going to be down until you're ready to use it again anyway. So why do I need to dis like, why do I need this constellation too? Why do I need six seconds of additional field time? I don't understand it. She already has a hundred percent field time. As long as you can get the energy recharge, in order to use her elemental burst every rotation. And I get that this constellation two increases your damage on your coordinated attack by 50%. That's fine. I also don't know why you have to get hit to get a benefit. So this is one of the weirdest C2s I think I've seen in a long time. And then to be honest, I honestly don't like the C1 and C4 either. They're fine constellations and they're actually really good. I just don't like that they exist because this is a character that they want you to put HP on. A lot of her kit revolves around HP, soak up damage, HP, also be a bruiser, but then they leave out some of the HP scaling on her skills and put it on C1. Molten Inferno's damage and Leonine's bite damage get HP scaling 
on Constellation 1. This feels like something that got stripped out of her kit and made a Constellation, which is something I don't like to see. And I've complained about that before. And it sort of seemed like they were getting a little bit away from that. But now we're going right back into it where ripped out a part of her kit, put it in a constellation. You also have the ability to damage yourself, right? Part of her kit is damage reduction, goes into Dea. This one's a little awkward to talk about as well. I like that they're exploring new grounds and new territory with this outside of just, oh, you have a Xingqiu damage reduction. Oh, you have a shield damage reduction. Oh, you have Beto damage reduction. Sort of be this weird interplay of she absorbs damage and then she can self heal herself will be healing herself with Stalwart and True, our Ascension. But this doesn't heal us enough. Once your HP goes below 40%, she's gonna heal 20% of her max HP right away. And then an additional 6% every two seconds for 10 seconds, which is going to be getting in another 30%. So she'll heal for 50% of her max health every 20 seconds. That is not enough. But you know what? We have a constellation to fix that if you're constellation four. She might be able to fulfill that role in your party as this bruiser, self-sustaining healer character that can reduce damage for your front line. Come in, do some stuff and heal back up. She can fulfill that role once you have C4. Before your C4 though, you're still gonna need a Barbara. You're still gonna need a Bennett. You're still gonna need something to heal her up because Stalwart and true 20 second cooldown is not enough healing. It's absolutely not enough healing. But don't worry, you can come in on C4 and have the complete character. You get C4, you'll get the HP scaling on your Molten Inferno and your Leonine Bite. You'll get an extra healing and also energy recharge on your Elemental Burst. And you know what? We'll throw in six second increase field duration. This doesn't even feel like they thought about this. This still irks me. This still irks me. This Constellation 2, more or less, in my opinion, is blank. It just it doesn't do anything. I want Daya to be awesome. I'm just kind of more or less disappointed with the state that this character was allowed to be released in. I don't really understand it. Maybe they have some big plans for her in the future. Well, that's a little copium if you ask me. And I want to be able to utilize her in a lot of different ways. I actually have some ideas on a team that's going to be the Bruiser Squad. Is it going to be good? Probably not. Can she do awesome things? I've seen a ton of crazy stuff. If you're a big Dea fan, listen, it's Genshin Impact, right? If you're a giant Dea fan, you've been saving up 500 million Primo Gems, right? You got the big credit card ready to rock and roll. You get the full C6. You go and get her weapon maxed out. You have the Mona, you have the Kazo, you have the Bennett. You can get in there and you can land 100,000 damage punches over and over and over within that four second time frame, And it's gonna be cool. Punch, 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 done. And if you have less than that, you can probably get her to do good stuff too because it's Genshin Impact. Not a lot of whole hard stuff to do in this game outside of floor 12, something of the spiral abyss. You'll be able to do a lot of stuff. I think that in the world exploration system, listen, daytime, you're running faster. I actually like this a lot especially if you have her with a Yelan team, you're gonna be smoothing across the battlefield because the Yelan does run even during her elemental skill. Having the ability to have that field down in the 20 second cooldown over here for the self heal on world exploration is gonna be fine. She's gonna drop below 40% health. You know, someone's gonna get hit by some Abyss Herald or something out there in the world, right? Some Fatui guy, and she's just gonna heal all the way up to like full health. That's fine, you can do that. So as far as is she usable in teams in Genshin? Yes. Is she very awkwardly designed? Yeah. But what I want you to do is get in there and try her out for yourself. Know that this is set up, though, in such a weird, wonky way that makes her seem so much stronger because of the Hydro Slimes, because of the Hydro Slimes applying Hydro to non-Hydro Slime enemies in here, because they give you Bennett, because you see a lot of Melt and Vaporizes and think that it's your Pyro character, when really it's Kaya's Elemental Burst or Kaya's Elemental Skill. You need to be able to recognize all of that, and I wanted to throw this video out there for you.